So the challenge is, if it's not going to get back through the blood system, how is it going to get back? Well, that's where the lymphatic system comes into play. <laughs> so in the big picture here, this is what we're basically covering here. Like this picture captures it nicely, I think. What we're going to do is we're going to take our capillary bed and we're going to weave in there some lymphatic capillaries, those green guys. We give them a different color so they look different. And um, so we have our typical red to blue capillary bed here, and then we add in these little green guys here. And what's going to happen is this fluid that's left behind is going to enter into the lymphatic capillaries and go through all these systems of vessels here and are eventually going to re-enter the blood just before, um, just before the blood hits the heart. And in the meantime, just so you know, this isn't covered in this video, this is covered in the next video, but in the meantime, as you can see, it's passing through a number of lymph nodes and while it's passing, it is being filtered. So returning the blood, Filtering the blood so it's nice and clean. Uh, sorry, not returning the blood. Returning the fluid to the blood. And as the fluid is passing, um, it's going to be nicely filtered of pathogens and cellular contents that don't necessarily need to be, um, and debris that don't necessarily need to be returned to the blood. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this guy here. These are lymphatic capillaries here. They're weaving in between here. They weave between the tissue cells and the blood capillaries. Just so you know, as an aside, these are not present in the central nervous system because the blood, uh, sorry, the brain and the spinal cord are drained by cerebral spinal fluid rather than blood or a lymphatic system of any kind. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice about these guys is that they have a blind end, so they're not circulatory. Uh, it's not a circulatory system, it's a one-way system only one way, from the capillaries back up into the blood. And so let's take a closer look at that blind end. If we look at the blind end of a capillary, of a lymphatic capillary, as with any capillary, it's made of simple squamous epithelium. It's called endothelial cells at this point. Very simple structure. Um, one of the things that's special about these endothelial cells is that each, each cell has one end which is anchored. These are collagen filaments that anchor the endothelial cells to the surrounding structures so that when there is external volumetric pressure, in other words pressure from fluids, from the interstitial fluid in the region, it will cause a pull on the filaments. So these guys will anchor and be stable and what happens is the other end of this is actually loose and it opens up and it allows fluids to enter in. Um, so as this is one of many veins, uh, so, sorry, one of many valves that we cover in this semester of the class, just so you know, all the valves have the same purpose. All the valves are meant to keep things going one way, always keep things going one way. Once it's on the other side of the valve, there's no movement back. So it's a unidirectional flow here. So there are three things that could potentially enter here. One of them, of course, is the interstitial fluid that has been left behind. One of them is all those proteins. Remember I said that proteins tend to leach out of the blood at the arterial end of a capillary and they need to be recaptured. You know, the blood wants them back. So proteins can also enter into the lymphatic system here. And then um, under special circumstances such as inflammation or infection, larger particles can enter. These valves can open quite wide. They're loose, so they can simply flap open. Once a lot of fluid is inside of here, they'll snap shut so that it doesn't flow back the other way. Um, but uh, when they're yawning quite far open, then really big things can enter, such as pathogens, bacteria, viruses. Even cancer cells could actually enter into the lymphatic system here um, and be part of this next fluid. So once it enters into here, the fluid is called lymph. So outside of the lymphatic system, it's called interstitial fluid. Inside of the lymphatic system, once it's entered into here, it is called lymph. So let's take a look at those, um, those drainage vessels. There's basically four in the row. This is a system of drainage vessels that collects the interstitial fluid, which is now lymph, transports it back to the blood, along with proteins in the fluid, and again, any kind of infectious material as well. Um, lymph is not pumped through the lymphatic vessels. It actually works much the same as veins. So 
the lymphatic vessels tend to move their way through muscles, so the muscles help to milk the fluid along. And then, of course, there are veins, uh, there are valves present in the lymphatic vessels that helps to make sure that things continue to move only in one direction. And again, keep in mind that as things are moving through, they are filtered through these lymph nodes, which are um, uh, in placed in, in, in places where there are lots of fluids will be passing through. Okay, so the movement of fluid goes like this. You start with the lymphatic capillaries, then you move on to lymphatic collecting vessels, shown here, collecting vessels that basically help to bring things along. Next you move into lymphatic trunks. I think there's a number of trunks shown in this picture. Lymphatic trunks are comprised of several collecting vessels that drain large areas of the body, such as the intestinal trunk, the lumbar trunk, there's the right lumbar trunk, the left lumbar trunk, and so on. And the fourth structure in this line are ducts. There are only two ducts. The job of a duct, D-U-C-T, the job of a duct is to empty the fluid finally, that has now been filtered, everything's been cleansed, to, to um, empty that fluid, that lymph, back into the blood. Um, so in this picture, you kind of have to toggle between these two pictures to find everything. But there is a right lymphatic duct and there is a thoracic duct, so there are only two. The right lymphatic duct will drain the right arm, the right side of the head, and the thorax. And the thoracic duct will drain the rest of the body. Um, so they're decently shown in this picture here. Some different sides of them are shown in this picture here. But I like this picture especially because it helps to show how these things are actually drained. So they kind of come up through or come across and all these green structures here are all the lymphatic structures and now here is the entrance of the right lymphatic duct here is the entrance of the um, thoracic duct and you can see where exactly it is that they're emptying into the venous system just before you get to the superior vena cava and then the heart